off. This is so nice knowing the oh, look, our APC battery is already charged. Oh, wow. Hello everyone, Thranks is here, and welcome back to Stationeers Episode 4. So when we last left off, I had done a bit of... Here, let's go ahead and get this smelting. I had done a bit of material gathering off camera in between the last episode and this one. As you can see, I've got a good bit of gold. I grabbed some more iron. I installed a light over here and moved the frames over so that we can work on our electronics printer and still be in the light. And it looks like, wouldn't you know it, the sun is coming up, which brings us to the focus of this episode, which is going to be automating this darn solar panel so that we don't have to do this manual movement of it anymore. And there's some things we're going to change, and we'll talk about why. There we go, we're generating power again. Uh, because, But really the main thing is we want to automate it because we want to add more, and once we add more, manually moving them is going to become a serious, serious pain. Let's go ahead and kick out whatever is in the auto lathe, put it over here. Now we already made the computer kit, so that's a good start. Let's go ahead and take this iron actually and, oh, it's not ready yet. Okay, well we'll smelt that as soon as we can. We are actively charging our APC. So what we need is, let's see, we got the computer kit. We're going to need a logic motherboard, which should print fairly fast. We'll go ahead and stop that and throw it in the backpack. The next thing we're going to need is we're going to make another solar panel. I'm pretty sure we can throw the kit in our back as well. Yep. And let's see what else we're going to need. We're going to need a lot of cables. No, not cable fuses. Let's find... I know the cable coil. Right. Eventually we'll make heavy cable coils, but they're not really necessary right now. Now, as for where we're going to put the computer, I'm thinking like here sort of next to everything close to the solar panels not going to take a ton of wiring do i want it to butt up close to the battery charger no i kind of want a little bit of space i'm thinking like here right that's good all right we're getting some coils we're just gonna let this thing keep going we're gonna need a lot of coils of cable that is We'll just keep picking these up. 27 is good. We're going to let it keep going. We'll shut this, make sure we're still charging. Good. Now the motherboard, we're going to go ahead and put in this section of the computer to tell it that we want this computer to perform a logic function. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to wire the power up separately from the data. And that's because we're actually going to wire the um, oh goodness, this might be enough cables. We'll see. We'll make more if we need to. Let's go ahead and just turn that off. That's still smelting. That's still charging. Uh, we're going to wire the power and data into separate wires because quite soon the energy requirement of the solar panels is going to become that where we're going to need heavy cable and we don't want to run heavy cable everywhere so to avoid that we're going to have uh, the heavy cable being just power going to where we need the power to go and then the data off the solar panels will just be coming to the computer so let's go configure those really quick Okay, so one of the things we're going to need, actually, as I was starting to get a little ahead of myself, well, first of all, we don't want those iron sheets falling anywhere, and secondly, yep, we need these glass sheets. There is no reason to have stuff just flopping around out there while we have this perfectly good storage locker. But for the glass sheets, we're going to need one. And remember, if you keep your hand, if you keep one hand open when you split one, you automatically put it into the other hand. And we have our solar panel kit on our back and lots of cables. So, uh, oh, 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 before I forget, 
Um, here, we'll go ahead and pick up this power controller. We can move that to storage, but really what I want is, nope, it's none of these. Consumables, we want the label, the labeler. And the labeler, we're going to also put in my backpack for now. Uh, you know, I don't think that's the best. Uh, I think I bet I could put the labeler in my uniform pocket. Hey, look at that. That way we always have it on us. Wonderful. Um, now I'm absolutely sure oops, that we're going to have to adjust the solar panels. So we should go ahead, or the solar panel rather. So we should go ahead and do that now while we can. Uh, but we're about to put up a second solar panel and then automate that. There we go. Hmm. Yeah, actually, we're going to have to move move everything a little bit because we're going to need some frames. Let's go ahead and give me my iron. Thank you. We'll just turn you off. Actually, you probably are ready to smelt more iron. Did we? Oh, power cut for a second. Oh, wow. Okay, we'll just use this iron for now. And we're going to make iron frames. We'll let those go for a minute. And we will put the power controller into storage, the extra one they give us. All right, we don't need that many frames. Um, but what I do want to do is to smelt another 50 iron into the arc smelter. Okay, excellent. That's probably good enough to get started. I, I think I'll leave it creating frames for now while we're up here. So the reason I wanted to make frames is I wanted to put a solar panel sort of separate from the other solar panels so that we know that that solar panel is going to be the director of the other ones um, because what we're going to do is we're going to use the readings off of one solar panel in order to um, in, I'm sorry in order to direct the other ones where to go which is also why we grabbed the label maker um, I don't think we're gonna weld all of these I only brought one anyways but let's go ahead and weld the one that matters, which is this one. Now, in case you're wondering, I'm doing it one off because I don't want them to cast a shadow on one another. And the director solar panel needs to have a clear line of sight up and down no matter what, so that nothing will interfere with its light reading. And we're going to go ahead and put the... Yeah, we'll do the data on this side and we'll do the power on the other. That looks good. And then we'll go ahead and build it. And then for wiring, we're just going to wire the data because this one is going to have to, we're going to have to rebuild that one. Um, but for now, we're just going to wire the data down here. And then once we get the data wired, we will um, I'm going to pull this solar panel down and reconfigure its wires so that it's power on this end and data on this end, merge these two data, and then we're going to wire it down. Um, I'm going to get to work on that, and I will, uh, I will bring you, well, we'll, we'll keep going until, we'll keep going until the sun goes down because then I'm going to have to work up there and it's going to be very dark. Let's go ahead and keep making iron frames for now. Oh, we're not charging. I guess I will take these iron sheets. We'll go ahead and, because uh, we're going to have to tear some panels up for wiring. All right, we'll put the frames back and we'll do, we'll finish welding the spots. We might as well. I don't want to, I don't want to expect one to be available and then to walk through it. There we go. Okay. And now that it's getting dark, or at least it's not going to be usable here, I'm going to go ahead and 
cut you back to when we've got everything wired up and we can get to the computer. Okay, so we're back. I've got the old solar panel and the new solar panel set up and we just need to make sure their verticals are the same as you can see this one is zero vertical and it's facing one way zero vertical is another way so we need to rotate this solar panel 90 degrees to the right and now it's zero vertical is the same as this zero vertical and the sun is coming up just in time i tried to do all of my wiring at night and it appears like everything is good to go and we're still down here and we're going to start charging soon okay so now here's what we're going to do uh, if you haven't already noticed while i was wiring stuff my jetpack graphic seems to be glitched on you can see it and unfortunately saving the game and locking out and logging back in didn't fix it so i might have to shut down the game completely it's a little distracting i do apologize for that um, but anyways we have the sun coming up and so we need to get to work to hopefully do this. Now, you don't need a config disk for or a data disk for a computer. It has a motherboard with a logic controller, so it, so it should be ready to go. Oh, that flashing is just so obnoxious. And I need to, I need to stand closer to this machine to be able to see what it says. All right, we're going to have to save and log out and log back in and see if it fixes that, because I, I don't know if I can deal with that. Okay, well, we're back. I've tried just about everything. I have tried kicking the jetpack on and on a bunch of, on and off a bunch of times. I've tried pulling out the propellant tank and trying to operate the jetpack with no propellant. I've also looked it up. I've not seen any solutions online, so we're just going to have to deal with it and try to keep it as bright as possible and I guess hope that a fix comes out for it eventually. Uh, so with the logic controller, we're going to start with states. So the first state is going to be night. I keep hitting the uh, enter button. Okay, first state is going to be night, and we're going to have a condition and two actions. So the first condition is, oh, the first problem is we did not label our solar panels. So let's go ahead and do that. This is the director, let's just call it lead solar panel okay that'll work lead solar panel and you will be alpha zero one um or how about um alpha solar i don't know how many things this thing's going to control actually it should be pretty well restricted yeah we'll just call it alpha zero one we're wasting daylight Okay, put this uniform away, and we're going to see if we can chase that sun. It's going to be difficult. Okay, so the lead solar panel, when its charge is greater than 400, it should change itself and alpha zero 01 by a vertical degree to 10. Or... Well, no, 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 no. We're going to leave this one zero, right? But the important thing is that it goes to the next state. So the next state is going to be early morning. So you tell it, okay, when the sun first comes up, because it's going to start at zero. So you say, well, when the sun first comes up, you're going to register that you have over 400 watts and then recognize that it's early morning so now in early morning we have one condition two actions and that condition is if the lead solar panel has a charge of less than 400 then what we want it to do is we want it and alpha zero one to change their vertical setting to 10 or actually make their vertical setting 10 And then it will go to the next state, which is going to be, hold on, right down here, state three, it is going to be morning, okay? 
So we have one condition, two actions. I won't bore you with it. So that's kind of the repeat, and I'll bring you back when we get to the end of it. It's just going to be more of the same kind of for each individual one. Okay, we're back. And uh, while I was doing a bunch of programming with the computer, trying to get everything all set up, some things got a little twisted. Um, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. We need to go back. It's only 90 degrees right because it needs to go the other way to zero so we're gonna have to get these solar panels configured in the proper placement for morning which is going to be facing that way and we're going to have to do that by hand and with any amount of luck this should be the very last time that we need to orient our solar panels by hand my concern is obviously that the computer pulls a good bit of power so we're going to have to make not only more solar panels, but more storage for those solar panels, uh, which I think, uh, let's be productive, we can go ahead and weld some iron frames over there. So let's go ahead and we'll grab our tool. And I think I found the mystery of what appeared to be... Um, jetpack graphics my goodness so it seems like this whole time i merely left the welder on wow good thing we didn't have any issues with damaging our suit or burning any of our stuff my goodness well it's the little things in this game that are very much self-critiquing so we're going to need to do more, we're going to need to look on building a large battery system for our solar panels. And I think what we're going to do is we're actually going to take the base down. So I'm going to continue these stairs down in this direction, just digging straight into the earth. I thought about putting stairs down that way too. Um, but we're going to start putting the base into the ground so that we can hopefully maybe get resources really close to home by hollowing out huge sections of the ground. But before we do that, we need to get our power situation straightened out. My goodness, we've lost our lights. Oh, we're out of power. The APC couldn't handle it, which means that this computer actually requires a pretty significant amount of power. I think two solar panels would have been plenty, but I believe our battery peaked and was fully charged, the one in the APC, um, before the night was over. So now the computer is almost programmed. I've got every state but one. We could come up and watch the sunrise as one would do. Um, I think instead I'm going to place some iron frames. So let's go ahead, we're going to go out this way and then that means that our ceiling is going to have to come out this way. So we can go start working on that. So let's start putting our frames down. Just like this, and like this. Wonderful. All right, that's enough precariously balancing on the edge of our giant iron frames. We're going to continue to keep this sort of like a manufacturing center for now, even though it's pretty much just for the early game. As I'm sure in late game there'll be other manufacturing setups that we'll come up with, but for now... Uh, this game is sort of all about time management. Um, I believe when you start, you obviously you have to get your battery charging right away. Um, but then after that, you seem to have a lot of air to last for a long time, and it kind of makes you wonder what the deal is with the whole atmospheric kits, and why did... Oh, we can weld this back up, right? So I deconstructed these iron frames a bit while I was running the data wire for the computer and the solar panels down to the computer. Right. Uh, but I think the reason they want you to work on the atmospherics early, or at least the idea is that it comes in a construction kit for a simple room in an airlock, is that if you if if the need to eat and drink was in this game, if I had to worry about food and water, which it's not implemented yet, 
I would have to not only get an atmosphere, I would have to start growing plants and somehow getting water from that atmosphere very, very quickly, which would totally change the nature of base building in the game. Because right now I'm only able to do all this big production and focus on gridding and solar panels because I don't really care if I have any food to put in my mouth. If that was to change, we would need a base kind of like we had in our last game where we have an airtight room full of an atmosphere very quickly, very rapidly. And I think at this point I'm about tired of waiting for the sun to come up. But it should be any second now. There we have it. There is the blinding sun. We're generating power. Let's go see if the computer came back on. The computer did come back on. So let's see. The final state that I was setting was sunset, which is where everything goes to 100. And then the final state would be let's make sure to rotate back up the final state would be reset state which is basically uh, by the way we need to make sure you set the next state of the state before it to the new one for some reason it sets up to stay on the one it was last left on we want this to transition to reset reset is going to be if the charge equals zero so if the solar panels are facing all the way to the sunset and the charge reads zero, then both of them should reconfigure their vertical to zero and then go back to the state of night, which is all the way up at the top. So let's make sure that's where our solar panels are. So it should be set to, no, not night, should be set to early morning. So let's go ahead and put it in the early morning configuration. We might have missed it. No, no, wait, no, they're, they're currently receiving 400. OK, so it just checked that it got less than 400 watts and it moved to the morning state. So it should have given them a correction of 10 to the vertical. So let's make sure the next state and the new state match up late morning to late morning, before noon to before noon, noon to noon, afternoon to afternoon, late afternoon. This, see, this one needs to be evening because this needs to match this down here. Evening to evening, late evening, sunset. See, this would get us in trouble. Sunset and reset to reset. Okay, that means that we should be good to go. The panels should be self-adjusting. So you can see our APC is still reporting charging. It's currently late morning. And we can sort of use this like a clock. We can see um, pretty much what time of day it is to help us feel like, you know, that there is some type of day here. Uh, we'll leave it on night so that when I see this lit up I know that the panels have reset to the night position. But let's watch the magic happen because now we've saved ourselves so much time. Okay, so the watts are going down and at this point what we should be able to do is watch them that when the watts go below 400 watts or at least with the lead solar panel they go below 400 watts they should both reorient themselves boom to the next setting and back up into the 400 watt range look at that that is killer so let's go ahead and build a third solar panel because we're going to be increasing our power needs and we need to make sure that this apc is getting fully charged so the computer can stay completely booted up throughout the night. So let's get ourselves another solar panel kit. We'll put in the gold there. Let's drop off our iron frames. Nope, we don't need any of that. Uh, gold, yep, iron. Let's just put it all in here. Copper, silicon. Not sure what we need, what we'll need, but let's put it all in here. Let's make sure our auto lathe is off. This is so nice knowing the, oh, look, our APC battery is already charged. Oh, wow. Um, well, then what we should do is we should charge our life support battery. 
That's what we should do since we're generating so much power now. So look at that. So two solar panels are enough to charge this battery and run the computer and it's not pulling power off the APC because it's not flashing green and uh, blue, which means it's not charging, and it's not flashing red and green, which means it's not running out. But instead, the panels are tracking the sun through the sky and giving us all sorts of power. Okay, so then the next item actually should be... Um, we're going to need a transformer. We'll start with a small one. And then after we get ourselves a transformer, let's go ahead and throw that into storage. Let's see what's next. We're going to need a... I would like to get another solar panel. Let's go ahead and print one of those. We're going to go ahead and wire it up. I'm sure it's not going to be too difficult to add a third solar panel. So all you would need to do, I'm going to show it now because I'm not going to do it on camera later, is to add a third solar panel. All your conditions are configured. You just need to add an action, change it to your new solar panel, which would be, um, you know, uh, Alpha 02 or Beta 01 or whatever, however you're going to name it, right? And then configure it for each individual state. So you would still have to go for each state and add it and tell it vertical 0, vertical 10, vertical 20 and change it to all the others. But you wouldn't have to, but that's that's not, you know, that's like half the work. It's not so bad. Would be nice if you could copy. I'm sure we'll get that in time. Hmm, what else do we need? A battery. That's what we need is a solid battery. Steel. Oh, we need steel. Well, I don't, uh, I don't know if we're going to have time on this episode to do all of that. I think what we'll do instead is we'll wire up this third solar panel. And in the meantime, while we have some sunlight, we're going to go ahead and make a furnace. So we'll go ahead and we'll start making a furnace. We'll turn off our electronics printer. This needs to stay on. Wow, look how fast it charged that battery. Holy smokes. It's amazing what two solar panels can do. Wow. Okay, especially when they're tracking the sun all day. That's pretty amazing. Uh, so let's get our kit and our glass here. Let's see, glass sheets, split one, put it back, solar panel, perfect, that should be all we need. And we have wires on us, we have six, ooh, we have six wires. I dare say that's not going to be enough, but that's okay, we'll figure that out. Um, so yeah, we're just going to build it just like this, solar panel number three. Let's go ahead and we'll label it. This will be Alpha 02. Label maker off, back in my uniform pocket. Okay. And then we'll get the cable out. Oh, we're in the shadows up here a little bit. So let's see, we're going to. Actually, this cable's going to have to change. So we'll deconstruct, and then we're going to need a junction. If I can remember, there it is. Boom. Okay, so now we're, we are getting some power from this one, not much. And we need to send the data down this side to merge with the data wire. So then what that means is... We're going to try to keep it the same so that the data wire, oh goodness, to where the data wire is running down this side of the solar panels, because we're going to have to keep these wires separate. Oh my goodness. Whew. Those wires, they will get you. All right, and we obviously we don't have enough. Um, one of the things we can check here, because we'll be able to set it up at night, which I don't think we need to leave our wrench on our backpack anymore, is we can make sure that as we go higher in number, 
it's tilting the right way and it's not. So this actually needs a 180 degree adjustment so that when it goes vertical to 100%, it is facing the same way as the other solar panels and then zero would take it back to the morning position or the awaiting morning position. Now, as I understand it, oof, let's not make a second furnace, please and thank you. I'm sorry to use up that much power. Uh, instead, let's make some cables, since all the stuff is in here. Cable coil, please. Oof, I do think the electronics printer makes them much faster, but that's all right. Actually, yeah, let's go ahead and let's kick everything out. Very good, turn it off. We'll move the copper over here and say again, now build me cables. Cable coil, much faster, much faster. We're gonna let it print. We're gonna get some more cables. We're gonna add the third solar panel to our network. I'll let it run for a minute just so we have some extra cables. I think that's probably pretty good for now. So let's go back up top and we will make sure that our third solar panel is configured. You can see one alpha one and the lead solar panel have reconfigured for sunrise. They're awaiting sunrise. Does that look twisted? That looks twisted to me. What's going on here? No, I need this tool. Horizontal 100 degrees. Should be 90. Ninety degrees. There we go. Oh, did you get messed with any? No, you should be zero degrees. Okay, so back to what we were doing. Try not to keep us in the dark too much. We're going to wire this solar panel over like this. And then here it's going to corner, and this is where it will junction. Let's get everything put away. Okay. Junction like this. Boom. Okay. Now we have data with this one. Um, we should probably go ahead and just put it in the sunrise position. Okay, very good. Now let's go back down here. I think to save energy, we're going to turn off that light. I still think our computer uses too much. You can see it's on the nighttime configuration here. And then one of the things that we can do, actually, to ensure that we make it through the night, is we can just watch the battery. And if we need to, we can swap it out with what's in our suit. In fact, we should probably go ahead and do that. There we go. We'll just let that keep going. Okay. Now as to what we were doing, since we're in the night condition, this is going to be the most important one to set up, which is that... Alpha zero two will move vertical to zero. Now let's make sure that alpha zero two didn't command a horizontal change during that time because the condition is met. So it might have tried to. No, it's the condition is not met. Okay, it's on that condition. It has to get. It actually has to get above 400 watts, right, to move to the next condition. Perfect. Okay, and then we'll just do the same thing. So for early morning. It's going to be alpha zero two vertical to 10, right? And then for the morning, let's move a little closer. I know it's probably hard to see alpha zero two vertical to 20 because we've already done all the condition programming and the lead solar panel is going to direct everything. For this one and we just got to add alpha zero two to each and every one of these and make sure the vertical change matches what's already there so this in this way it might be a little painful to add lots and lots of solar panels to this 
and I'm sure once, just like everything else with this game, once you get lots and lots of solar panels, there is a, another easier solution. Again, like I said, there is a daylight sensor that you can make that supposedly makes this process a good bit easier, um, as I understand it. But we don't have one of those machines built, and really I just wanted to make this happen as soon as possible, and this seemed like the quickest way to do it. Because the time that we spend running up there and changing this for every single solar panel is it was just taking away from all of our time. I couldn't go out and grind uh, materials during the day, which, I mean, that's really the best time to go out and be looking for stuff is when you have the sun working for you like that. And I couldn't even do it because I was too worried about what the solar panel wasn't collecting that our batteries needed. And now we don't have to worry about it anymore. So I thought about skipping through this, but I figured I would show this whole process just because it's so much faster than the other one. And then the reset condition, you need to make sure you don't leave out your newest solar panel on the reset position to zero. Boom. And we're still in the night condition. All three solar panels should be wired up. So now we're set up with not two, but three solar panels to give us even more power. And I think we're going to need to maybe turn this light off. We should be fine. The main power draw is coming from the computer, not the not the uh, light. The light actually doesn't use very much power at all. All right, iron, gold, silicon. We built a furnace. So the next thing we're going to make, and I don't want to be too worried about power through the night, because, and here's the thing is, all the solar panels are set to go look where the sun comes up at the end of every night as soon as they have zero wattage. So as soon as the solar panels report that they have no wattage whatsoever coming in, they realign to the position the sun's coming in. And the reason that's important is because if we lose power in the middle of the night, this computer will go out, but if as long as they're facing the direction the sun's going to come in, then they will start getting power the moment the sun comes up, which will boot the computer up, register it's over 400 watts, and kick it out of the night logic condition, which is really what you want, um, is to be in the night logic condition, or to have a condition like this for the process. Um, I think we're doing okay. It looks like... I know the power is low, but here's the thing is we have a really, really good solar panel system that should be able to handle this no problem. What we don't have is battery storage for the, all the energy our solar panels are going to gather. This APC can only hold one large battery cell's worth, and we need more. And to do that, we're going to need steel, and to get steel, we're going to need a furnace, which we made, but we're also going to have to tackle the other item I was talking about, the hydraulic pipe bender. Okay, and that's going to be about the time to wrap up the episode I am likely going to take a good amount of time let's see we're good on gold we could use some copper we could use some more iron so I'm going to take the probably the next day cycle or two to go ahead and just let everything do what it's doing because I know the solar panels will do their own thing and I'm going to be going out and trying to gather a lot of materials but only after the hydraulic pipe bender has finished construction that being said, this is the end of Stationers 4. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you've had a good time watching because, as always, I've had a good time playing. Come back next time as we work on making better storage for our power, and that's going to require to have some serious batteries and some power transformers, and we're going to talk about heavy-duty cable, when it's needed, why, and how to rig up your power system for the next phase that we're going to be transitioning to, which is heavy amounts of power so that we don't have to lose anything overnight. So we shouldn't have to worry about turning off our lights at night. We're going to handle power first and foremost. But until next time, take care.